In the last video, we implemented experience replay and we set up our hyperparameters. Now we'll implement the epsilon greedy algorithm and test out our training loop up to this point. Let me initialize epsilon, epsilon equal to self that epsilon init. Now down on my episode loop, if we're training and we generate a random number between 0 to 1, and if that random number is less than epsilon, which we start off at 100%, we'll do a random action. Otherwise, we'll select the action that the policy network prescribes. Obviously, at the beginning when the network is untrained, it's gonna spit out garbage. But as we train, the policy gets better, we'll get better actions. Let me go up and import random first. Here we'll do action equal to policy dqn. I'll pass it the state. It's gonna spit out the q values and we want the index of the one with the higher number. We'll call arc max. So let's see what that really means. Remember that the output of the network is going to be the two values, the two Q values, and we want the largest one, the index of the largest one. So this is going to be at index zero. This is going to be at index one. If this one is the biggest one, then we want the index of this one. We're doing this because the indices here just happen to match up with the action space, zero and one. Keep this in mind, if the actions don't line up with the output, you're gonna have to do some translation. Now we want to slowly decrease epsilon. After one episode, we'll do epsilon multiply by the decay, and we'll do the max of this to make sure that it doesn't go under the minimum. And then we'll uh, keep track of the history. Let me declare the uh, history here. There are different ways to decrease epsilon. Right now we're multiplying by 0.99995. You can also do epsilon minus the decay. So uh, that will be more linear. If you do that, then you will change this to 0 0.0001 or something like that. Which way you want to decrease epsilon and how fast, that's something that you can play around with. So that is pretty much epsilon greedy algorithm. Now, since we're doing PyTorch, we need to make sure the things that are going into the network are converted into tensors. So state goes into the network. We need to convert it into a tensor. And this is how we can do it. We'll pass the state into the tensor function. It's a float. We'll send it to either the CPU or GPU. The new state that's coming back, we also need to do the same thing. Convert the new state to a tensor. And also later on, we need to do some uh, math on the reward as well. So we'll convert the reward also. Same thing with action. We need to do some math on that later on. Here where we are estimating for the best action, PyTorch does gradient calculation automatically during training. So here we're not doing training, we're just evaluating a state. So we can turn off gradient calculation using this line just to save on processing power. Right now, state is a one-dimensional tensor. Remember in the earlier video, I mentioned that PyTorch uses the first dimension as the batch dimension. State looks something like this. What we need to do is to convert it into two dimensions. So it adds one more dimension here to make it into a uh, two-dimensional matrix. The way to do this in PyTorch is using something called the unsqueeze function. The unsqueeze function basically takes this and adds another dimension at the beginning. Since I have Codium installed, I can just tell it to explain this to me. Unsqueeze is used to add an extra dimension. Specifically, this line adds an extra dimension at zero. This means it adds a dimension at the beginning. Okay, that's exactly what we want. Now, because the input is two-dimensional, the output of policy DQN is also going to be two-dimensional. So here, I need to squeeze it, which takes two dimension, send it back into one dimension, and then I can find the uh, index of the largest Q value. What gets returned from policy DQN is a tensor. 
So down here, action, I need to call the item function in order to get the value of the tensor. I think it's time to run the code to make sure it works. And I wanted to do the cotpole hyperparameters. Call the run function is training true. I'll render to the screen. Let me put a breakpoint near the top. I'll hit F5. Okay, I'm gonna hit F10, get the number of actions and uh, the number of states. We can see here, Codpo has four states, two actions. Initialize, initialize, initialize our uh, DQN. Oh, this should be two device like this. Okay, move the breakpoint and we start it. Try again, okay, that's successful. It's training. Initialize replay memory, initialize epsilon, should be one. Now we'll go into our infinite loop. Episode should start at zero. Okay, we set the environment. You can see card pole popping up here. Convert the state to a tensor. Let me print it out. Before conversion, it would just look like an array like this. After conversion, it's wrapped around a tensor object. And it's also uh, on my GPU. CUDA 0 is my GPU. Initialize. While not terminated, if it's training and random is less than epsilon, since epsilon is at 100%, we're guaranteed to come in here and get a random action. The random action is to, uh, one is to move right for card pull. Convert that one into a tensor. Now this action dot item, it should just extract the one back out, pass it to the step function, and we should get a new state. Okay. New state is a regular array. Reward of one. Terminated should be false. Accumulate the reward. Convert the new state and the reward to tensors. All right, so you see the difference between new state after conversion and reward. Now we append the uh, experience to memory. Let's see if I can see memory. Let's do memory dot sample. Oh, sample one. It brought back the uh, experience that we just inserted in there, which should be just a tuple of all these things. Set the state as equal to new state, and now it'll loop again. Put a breakpoint here. I'll hit F5 for it to run to here. Collect my rewards into this array. Decrease epsilon. Let's see what epsilon is after decreasing. Oops. Epsilon. All right, it got decreased. And then we save it in the history. Go up here for the next episode. So presumably the pole fell. The pole went past a certain point and fell and the episode ended and we're starting a new one. Okay, in the next one, maybe two videos, we should be able to finish up the training loop, test it on card pole real quickly, and then hopefully we can start training Flappy Bird.